Hi, a couple of years ago I did a series of uh, videos on on how to install two Linux distros on a single HDD with a shared home as it says um, and the sound sucks on these by the way uh, I had older equipment and the sound was terrible You know, you may just want to turn off the sound and turn on the captions if you, if you can't stand the sound. Uh, anyways, these, I, I would refer these to you. I'm going to just show w how I have it set up and what you need to um, configure your drive with UEFI. Now, it, I'm not going to go into the details of how to create a new partition with GPARD. If you need that, then I would refer you back to this one because it goes into how to create each partition. Um, but one thing I want to caution you here is two years ago, Pop! OS was based on Ubuntu 18.04 and it was had a Grub bootloader and Mint was also based on 18.04. So they were very similar and even though they had different desktop environments DE they they could share because they used the same repos and they had the exact same application versions that is no longer true and I I cannot recommend at this point that you share pop OS with any other distro Mostly because it now uses system D instead of the boot the grub bootloader and there is a way to do that but it's extremely painful and there are so many differences now between the Mint 20 and Ubuntu and Pop OS and Ubuntu that sharing a home with with Mint 20 is no longer viable. So I would refer to these for the techniques but not actually doing this. So the techniques for creating creating the um, partitions, the techniques for installing a distro, the first distro, the technique for installing a second distro and and you know using the shared home if that's what you're going to do I, again there are very few distros nowadays that you can share distros between uh, shared homes between the distros the the one that I use and I'll show you here in a second is one of the few I think that can still do it and even then there are possibilities of conflicts. So here's what my drive looks like. I'm I can boot um, mint 20 that's the mint root. I can boot LMDE4 and it you mint 20 and LMDE4 use the same home because they're extremely close now because they use different repos there are the possibilities of running into conflicts between versions of applications uh, Firefox I've run into now Eventually, they kind of catch up with each other, but I don't use 
meant very often anymore. So, so if it's something you're going to jump back and forth to a lot, you know, you're almost better off rather than having a shared home, having some kind of shared um, data storage. Um, I time shift. Everything is on time shift. Uh, all time shifts are on that one. Backups. Doesn't have to be XFAT if you're just sharing um, with um, oh, the Linux EXT4, but backups is where all my backups are. Now, in this case, I'm using XFAT because I share this with Windows. Um, and it's a way to share files between Windows 10 and Linux that I find, yes, there are other ways, but I find this way, um, I, I, to me, the easiest, and I like it. Setup is not the easiest, because you need to, for most Linux distros, install XFAT um, support, but that, that's a su single sudo apt install xfat dash utils, you know, so that, that's not a big deal. Um, you, GPARD cannot read or create an xfat partition, so you'll need to use something like the disks program that comes with most Debian based systems. I don't know if it also comes with Arch or others. And this, th it will, it can deal with XFAT. So I created on disk, but I'm more comfortable with GPART. So I do everything else with GPART. But, but as you can see, you can, you can, you can create it with disks and see it with disks. You just can't with G part, but you know, now also with Windows 10, you have to add XFAT support that I found, and that's another whole video. I mean, that's another whole discussion um, sharing XFAT, but I just want to show you that that's what I'm having here. Um, MX Linux, I do not share its home, it's very small. I don't I don't use it a lot. I use it mostly to, you know, jump in and see what it's doing and and help other users. Um, I like it. Uh, if LMDE4 wasn't around, I would probably use it instead. Um, but I'm very comfortable with Mint, and I've also found that because LMDE is Debian 10 based. It's easy to use other um, desktop environments. They're all in the repos. Uh, you know, people will complain, oh, it only comes in one flavor. Yeah, but it's easy enough. I, I have it on a Dell XPS 11 touchscreen running with GNOME because GNOME is much better at handling touchscreen devices than any other desktop environment. Um, it handle well, anyways. Um, so you got to start with after you create your partition table, and of course this is not going to let me do it. <laughs> but after you create your partition table as a GPT, not MS DOS GPT. Um, then you're going to first off create a FAT32 partition and you need to set the flags as boot and ESP so that your system will find it and, and use that to boot from it. I use five 512. I probably have a bunch of crap in there still, which is why I'm using so much um, because I've done added, added and taken off so many different ones that I haven't cleaned it up. 
Um, I need to go and clean it up. Um, so then we have mint root, we have shared home. Yeah. Oh, swap. Optional. Um, I like having a swap file. Uh, Linux uses the swap file for more than just RAM overflow. It uses it to place pages that are not actively being used, so it increases the efficiency of RAM. And you'll of, often see, oh, I, I'm only using three, three gig, you know, three, th three uh, gigabytes out of my, you know, 16 gig system, but why is there 500 megabits being used by swap? Yeah, that's what it's done. It's put stuff there you're not using very often so as to in improve the efficiency of RAM. Um, I have it at the end. I no longer do it this way. I did it this way way back when I first started doing this and I now put swap right after um, the, the, the FAT32 to give me more room to move things around on the rest of the drive if I need to. Um, but it really doesn't matter where you put it. Um, you know, it will find it and use it. Um, now, one other thing I want to show you here is this system. This is a laptop, a Lenovo T520 with a, a um, caddy a hard drive caddy. Now both of my drives, by the way, are are SSDs with a hard drive caddy that goes in place of the optical drive. And that's where I have Windows 10. I do not like Windows and Linux on the same drive, dual booting. There are just way too many problems. And 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 if you install Windows 10 after Linux on its own drive, pull pull the Linux drive just to be safe and and install Windows all by its little lonesome and then put your Linux back in and then do an update grub and if you do that grub will find Rebel Fine Windows. Now, I happen to use the MX Linux um, Grub. I don't know. I like it. Could use any of them. They'll all find the Windows Boot Manager. And so from Grub, I can boot to that. I don't have to go into BIOS. I don't have to change, change the thing, um, the order between drives of which is bootable. I leave the, the Linux as the bootable one and and then I can boot Windows from here. Okay. No, I don't have much more to say. Um, Dang if I'm forgetting anything. Um, again, if you need more details, the actual install details are the same, whether you're using UEFI or, you know, or um, BIOS. All you have to do is make sure that your that your USB stick booted into UEFI mode. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Let me see if I'm going to remember what that was. OK, so 
So, if you'll notice here, and you can do this when you first boot up from a USB stick, if you have an EFI folder in slash this slash firmware, then, then it is ready to go. Another way is using INXI. I didn't have to show all this. Is okay. On the machine shows what the laptop is and this is either going to say UEFI or BIOS now not all distros come with INXI on the USB stick um, which is why I showed the other method as well um, most mints well, all mints. A lot of Ubuntu's don't. A lot of Debian's do. MX Linux, I believe, does. Um, but not all distros come with INXI. You'll need to install it. Um, but these are the two ways to tell whether you're running UEFI or running BIOS. I think that's about it let me know in the comments if I forgot stuff I may redo this video I, I may add to it um, have a good day like and subscribe